I've sung probably, I think it's around nine or ten different bel canto roles uh, in, in my career, mostly early on. And um, there's so much uh, in bel canto that is really a demonstration of what singing is. The very word bel canto, which means beautiful song, beautiful singing, um, and it's, it's, it's a way for us to show the capabilities of the human voice altogether in terms of range, the extremes, the lows to the extreme highs, um, the virtuosity of coloratura singing, the pathos of a beautiful melody spun out um, as well as we can in terms of dynamic also uh, contrast. And uh, the, the framework of a bel canto role are, consists of you know, a series of scenes, arias, duets, trios, um, uh, but, but the mad scene, for instance, or the final scene for a soprano is the mark of a really juicy role and a grateful role. It's also the most challenging music there is because it really does require everything. You know, there's not this um, in, incredibly, the orchestra is not another character, generally speaking. It adds so much character, but during the arias, for instance, it really does accompany and support us. So uh, everything is, is really on stage uh, in a contest between the artist, the tradition, the legacy and the yardstick that's been created by singers who've gone before. We get to be incredibly personal in this repertoire because the da capo aria gives us a chance in the repeat to exert our own musical creativity. We can improvise if, if one is really fluent in the musical language of bel canto, um, very much like the Baroque opera. We can write things that are um, the most virtuosic, far beyond uh, what we're singing in the first time through. And it's a little bit like jazz, because in jazz, one has a tune, American Songbook, say, and um, really a jazz musician's stamp, or the mark of a great jazz musician, is what creatively they do with that basic material. And in bel canto, uh, what I've learned with experience is to take the da capo and make it uh, a show of my own strength, uh, of, of the things that I do well, or the ways in which I can fit virtuosity to my own voice, and it might not be at all like what someone else has done. So um, that's been the real fun of doing it, and uh, um, Lucrezia Borgia is interesting because is a, it's, a, it's a role that one um, can sing and invest with more drama, a, a darker quality than many of the ingenue, many of the heroines of the bel canto repertoire, because she is so extraordinarily complex. In the context of history, when one thinks about the abuse, the sexual abuse, the physical abuse, the fact that women were pawns at that time in term, and, and used for power, really, um, depending on their, their lineage, their family, the, the fact that they could bear children, bear heirs, women really, uh, in that context and in that uh, environment, for her to have made the choice to say, I'm going to play in the man's world. kind of interesting in a way because she was exerting her own version of this power. So if she turns out to be twisted, if she turns out to be unsympathetic in the end, it's it, to me it's an interesting um, choice that she made to, rather than to be a victim all the way, which is what most of the characters are in these operas, uh, to, to try and at least um, compete. <laughs> 
My favorite moment in the opera is in the end when she discovers that her son has actually died. And the blues of the, the um, Cavatina in Eredessa il figlio mio, he was my son, which is a revelation, of course, to her husband and to everyone else in the room. It was the harmonic choices in that, with the with the low, with the low notes also that I could really put that jazz sort of uh, um, chest voice into. That I just love digging into that. And I really enjoyed also sharing uh, Lucrezia Borgia with two young singers and really being able to feel inspired by the energy and the, the excitement of both Michael Fabiano and Elizabeth Deschamps at the beginning of their careers. San Francisco Opera has been a very important relationship in my operatic history, uh, singing there from the early 90s, starting with uh, the Countess in Le Nozze di Figaro, almost every year for 10 years, um, and then coming back once in a while since then. But, but not only my, my professional memories there are so strong, with, with the premiere of Streetcar Named Desire by Andre Previn, the premiere of Conrad Souza's uh, Dangerous Liaison, uh, but also my personal memories because the, those 10 years factored um, heavily into the childhood of both of my children. So when I think of San Francisco, I think of the parks and the zoo and the redwood forest and the boats and of course the, the sort of the Riviera um, part of Ghirardelli's and, and all of those fun, fun memories. I love being there. I always think this pace, this place is, is heaven on earth. <laughs>